Lots going on on other sheets, and it was the last end. Danielle Inglis drawing against three, went over the hog line, had a violation, and it removed. That's why it's a six point or a six one difference. Rachel Holman's at 93%. Emma Miskew at 63. That is not going to help. And it has been steals for Melissa Adams that has got her into trouble. And the hitting strength of Kate Cameron is really evident today. Now, these are new this year. We haven't had them for a couple of years. And for teams that are not used to playing with them, maybe they drifted a little bit over. But here you get caught. And so that stone is removed. You mentioned it earlier, Kath. It's such a better sliding surface underfoot. You get to that hog line in a big hurry. It's a muscle memory game. You kick out for a, maybe, a, in that case, a 10-second hit. You've got X amount of leg drive. It's a little too much leg drive to get to that hog line. We've seen a lot of it. We watched it in Alberta, Joanne. Yeah, lots of rocks were pulled in Alberta on the men's side. And you could see Marie in that replay of her slide. I think she was trying to fix the line of direction a little bit. Sometimes you don't come out quite on target. So you try to lean into it a little and just took a little too long to let it go. Just annoying. For Danielle Inglis, she, she makes the draw, which is, she never misses the draw. It's 3-2, no, now it's 6-1. And when you're playing against a team like Clancy Grandy, who is really yeah, looking comfortable, yeah, it's going to be double, very yeah, difficult right. to yeah. come back. And just Slide mentally, you're yeah. just devastated by what's happened. Okay, good. And on our sheet, Nova Scotia went to play a corner guard with Erin Carmody's first. Unfortunately, she had a hog line violation, so that rock was pulled. A lot of hog line violations already. Everybody relaxed for a couple of years. The surface here with Merklinger is so good. And it's tough. It's almost like shanking one, uh, Kath. Not you've ever done that in golf. Oh, no, 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 no. But once you've gone over the hog line, that very next delivery, yeah, you're thinking about the hog yeah. line. You're not thinking about the shot. Throw, Carly. You can't bounce. Well, lots and lots of trouble this end for Kerry Galush and our Northwest Territories team. And they called a timeout. Kevin Cooey came out and they elected to play a draw. That's that red stone that you see. There was a guard in front of it. Joanne Rizzo made it perfectly. And on her final stone, Rachel Holman tried the run back and just missed picking it out. And so just like that, instead of drawing against five as she did on her first, she's got a hog line violation yeah. as we just talked about. And so it will be just the single. Isn't it amazing? Oh goodness. That's wild. I don't think we saw a single hog line violation in the opening draw. And today, this is, I think it's four now you've seen. Quick path, people just not thinking about it. And I, I think they'll now be <laughs> overthinking about it. Probably going to cost Ontario their game on sheet A, and this could cost uh, Team Galusha too. Eight. Yes. Yep. Yep. There was only one last night, and that was Saskatchewan. That's good. Okay. Sorry. But there's definitely been more this afternoon. Oh, yeah. Looks like it straightened up. So we've had five hog line violations so far, and you would expect that it will start to wane. 
I know that opening draw of the Alberta men's provincials, there were walks being pulled off. <laughs> and then you just start to dial it back and, and just have that kick speed a little lower, the release a little quicker. But that can also mess with you. Oh, no question. Your timing's off. You might not even put enough rotation on it trying to get the thing out of your hand. There's a yellow, red, red run back uh, that will drag enough to get the Jones shot, but it doesn't necessarily help. So, 10, I got 10. So, earlier today, after the afternoon draw, there was some looks because we had so many hogline violations. It was Carly Burgess that pointed out that when you're sliding over, there's nothing that happened on that side. And then, if she takes it to the other side, so she resets the sensor and goes to the other side and look at how far away you are from the hog line before it goes. So what Curling Canada has done in the abundance of caution, what they've found is that there are some metal rings under the ice. It could be from speed skating timing because they do that here. It could be just simple rebar. They don't want any infractions if they're not sure. So they have put pins in all the rocks to dismantle the battery and what will happen is if a team is concerned that an opponent is going over the hog line, you can go to the officials, they will stand on the hog line, but otherwise you will not Whoa, see the sensors Whoa. used for the rest of the Scotties. Couple more nose hits here, Russ, and they'll be out of the rings. There's the pin I talked about just in the front. That little loop that you see, that's where the lights flash. So they stick that in there, and it prevents the lights from flashing because you also don't want it to be a distraction for the players. Mm, absolutely. 